Nikki has been watching The Last of Us. If you don't know, she has her own channel over at Gnarly Nikki. You can look that up and check out her videos. In Ooh. fact, you've got over a thousand subscribers right now. Yeah, I've got my channel monetized. Wow, congratulations. Yay. Very, very cool. Um, so it's based on fungus that took over some ants. Yeah. And uh, that was kind of the inspiration I, I, I for the show. I didn't know that until like last week when we were doing reactions and it was a casual geographic video. And I was it like, was. excuse me? Excuse fucking me. Yeah. Um, and guess what? The Frank just released a video and it's called True Facts. Killer Parasitic Zombie Fungi. I'm not excited. So I think I'm we're going to get a little bit more insight into this crazy fungus thing that controls insects. Are you prepared for this? There better not be any spoilers. I don't think there's going to be any uh, spoilers for you, okay. but there may be some shit that you just don't want to know. Yeah. <laughs> the right. Frank, always bringing out the quality content. I can't wait to see what he has in store for us. So again, prepare as we watch True Facts, Killer Parasitic Zombie yeah. Fungi. Now I'm going to tell you three stories <laughs> about fungi that get a bit gnarly. But before I do, let's try and see things from the perspective of the fungus. Here is a fungus baby, or spore, and one of the baby. first things it needs to do is find food. So it often creates a spore boner. Jerry, it's not called a spore <laughs> boner. Spore what is boner. it? A germ tube? Really? All right, well, you can see the contents of the spore sort of oozing out into that germ tube, which tries to find food. Now, like the Dorito, some food that fungi like to eat comes in packaging that's hard to open. So these germ tubes have evolved ways to break through barriers. Look at this one, busts right through the cell wall of a plant using chemicals and force. And once it's in, starts making a series of tubes that start munching. This right here is nematoctonus, a bit of an unusual spore because it can swim with the aid of its spore boner. Jerry, <laughs> it's a flagellum. Anyway, this fungus hunts these tiny worms called nematodes, which are everywhere. Here you can see a whole bunch of spores clustered around the nematode's anus. As is the custom, after attaching you can see they make germ tubes that enter the body, and then the fungus can eat the nematode from the inside out. Remember, try and see things from the fungi's perspective. Once it's done eating, it's time to make some babies. Here you can see the spores being formed and then pushed out through those tubes. These spores can swim and nematodes are plentiful, so the fungus doesn't have to get too fancy about how and where they're released. But most spores aren't particularly gifted in moving, so it's quite important that they wind up close to whatever it is they eat. Fungi have evolved a number of clever ways to get the spores to the right place, but perhaps the cleverest way is getting the food itself to help out. The genus Entomophthora, for example, likes to eat flies. These flies here are infected, but unlike that nematode, they're not dead. Yet, Entomophthora starts off as these specialized little spores called conidia, which are quite sticky, especially when they come in contact ah. with the outside covering of a fly. Like before, they use a germ tube to create a hole in the outside of the insect. The contents of the spore then go into the insect's blood or hemolymph. At first, the fungus just nibbles a little bit avoiding vital organs and targeting fat cells. Their backside starts to fill up with the fungus, which takes on a creamy white appearance. <laughs> Nasty. But <other> <laughs> Nasty. That, they seem fine doing all the fly things that a fly do. But the fungus is up to something else. After about 48 hours or so, endomophthora cells start entering the fly's brain. As the number of cells in the brain increase, they seem to target a group of neurons involved in the fly's sleep-wake cycle, or circadian cycle. The science hippies know this because the fly's brain is small enough that they've been able to map it out in quite some detail. On the day the fly will die, just around sunset, and yes, fungi can tell time, it's crazy, those cells in the brain seem to trigger the fly to release juvenile hormone. This in turn creates a burst of energy in the fly. Oddly, around the same time the fly stops flying. From here on in, don't call it a fly, call it a walk. <laughs> Kill me. I mean, look at this poor bastard. Not only is he about to die, he's getting chased around by a giant paintbrush. Right? All this hormone energy and the not flying seems to generally cause the fly to go up or summit. When it is suitably heighted, the fly then extends its mouth parts or proboscis. By now, the fly isn't in very good shape, so it's all a bit shaky. Now, they don't know who makes it, either the fly or the fungus, but this adhesive starts leaking out the proboscis, which glues the fly's mouth parts to the surface. And now uh. the fly is stuck. With the fly firmly in place, the fungus can now eat all the things that it's been patiently avoiding. Organs, the testes, I mean you save those for last. And in one final manipulation, the fungus causes the fly to raise its wings to get them out of the way for what happens next. 
With its food source depleted, the fungus is now ready to make some babies. Ah! Here you can see it engulf what remains of the fly. And if you look My closely God. at the top, you can see the spores hitting the glass of the camera lens. The fungus creates these specialized structures called conidiophores. You can see them emerge here in silhouette. They're little stalks with spores on the end of them, which then get shot off by a liquid cannon, shooting those little sticky conidia spores in all directions. And check this out. If the spore lands on a part of a fly that it can't infect, like a wing, it can create its own spore cannon and fire off another spore. Sporeception. Now imagine you're an uninfected fly in the area. Is deadly spores popping off in all directions? I mean, it's pretty grim, <laughs> but it actually gets worse. In the process of making these spores, compounds are secreted that are essentially sexual signals, causing other flies to come oh. up and have sex with the corpse. Oh and no! You're thinking, what's so bad about? Oh that? no! Remember the sticky stuff that glued the mouth parts to the surface? Well, it didn't just come out. Oh of the so my if you try to god! Have sex with this corpse, you get stuck to it. And now, not only are you infected, but you've got some explaining to do when you go to work tomorrow. Oh. I mean, Dave from accounting is going to say something like, Oh, looks like you had an interesting weekend. And you're like, yes, it was a nice weekend, Dave. Went antiquing, planted some herbs, f***ed a corpse, and did some light spring cleaning. Thank you very much. Freaking Dave. Listen, when these zombie fungi come to us, <laughs> we're going to need the skills to fight back. The kind of skills you can learn at Brilliant.org. I mean, if movies have taught me anything, we're going to have to build Aquafinesi robots. Aquafinesi said fungusy. Luckily, Brilliant has thousands of lessons, from foundational and advanced oh, math to AI, wrong, data science, neural <laughs> networks, and more. And there's new lessons added every month. If learning something new sounds overwhelming, you haven't tried Brilliant. Oh. It's interactive and focused on everyday learning. Small bites that push you forward at your own pace. I mean, don't expect AI to save us. We'll be off playing <clears> chess by itself. Gonna make the flesh computers do all the work. This is the sort of learning that gives you a leg up, both in the workforce, but also in appreciating the world around you. To try everything Brilliant has to offer, free, for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash zayfrank or click on the link in the description. The first 200 of you will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. Brilliant is a long time You know how I said I could eat facts. a sandwich through Please anything? Please check out today. Not oh, this. Really. No. Oh, right. Entomophthora oh. is not the only genus of fungi that learned how to control the insects that they eat. Ophiocordyceps is perhaps one of the most well-known. It's a bit of a show-off, really. The genus eats all sorts of insects, but Ophiocordyceps unilateralis is particularly good at manipulating carpenter ants. The end of the infection is a lot like Entomophthora. The ant goes up, then its mouth parts are attached to a leaf or a twig, and then the fungus kills them and makes babies. The resulting ant looks a bit like Maleficent on a bad hair day. But how the fungus does it evolved independently and seems to be very different. For one, unlike Entomophthora, Ophiocordyceps cells don't enter the brain. They do, however, seem to secrete compounds that hijack the ant's central nervous system. Mm. Now, it can be hard to figure out what part the fungus is doing and what part is just the ant being really f***ing sick. But it's pretty clear as the infection spreads, the ant is a bit broken. It starts staggering around and convulses, which means that it falls. Would be very embarrassing for a healthy ant. But it's thought that this falling helps make sure that the ant doesn't get too far up in the trees. And instead will stay closer to the forest floor for what happens next. Now on its final day, this wobbly ant goes out and finds itself a leaf or a twig above the forest floor. The fungus needs the ant to attach itself very firmly, but it doesn't use glue. Ugh. This fungus takes over control of the ant's mouth parts. Here, this is crazy. This is what a healthy muscle cell in an ant's mandible looks like. You can even see the motor neurons coming in and connecting to it. And here's what the muscle looks like when it's infected. Oh. Those are fungal cells that have surrounded the muscle. But they don't just surround the muscle, the fungal cells start connecting to each other and then some of them connect into the muscle itself. It's like a poorly knit sweater of fungus. If you slice through a section of the ant's jaw, you can see that the fungus is friggin' everywhere. So when it's time to get the ant to bite down, the fungus seems to be very much in control of the machinery. On a leaf, the bite is almost always around that center vein. And it's deep. Those are the bite marks. As the ant bites, the fungus destroys the muscle tissue, which makes it impossible for the ant to ever let go. At this height off the forest floor, the conditions are just right for the fungus to take its time. Over the next week or so, the fungus consumes what's left to be eaten, and then sends up a stalk or fruiting body from just behind the head. And from here, the spores are released, ready to find an ant of their own to love and kill. 
Now here's the thing, those two stories were kind of nice, compared to this one. Fungi in the genus Massaspora, which is a dad joke time bomb, have a taste for cicadas. Now some cicadas are around every year, but some species only come up every 13 to 17 years, all at once. And for a fungus that likes to eat them, that's a buffet worth waiting for. For those 13 to 17 years, the cicada lives underground as a nymph. Spores of the fungus can also be found in that soil. And as these cicada nymphs begin to emerge, some of them are infected. Getting right to it, the fungus eats away the cicada's abdomen and sexual organs, which apparently they can live without. Then it creates a whole bunch of canidia spores, which form a sort of plug back there. You could say their back end is a mass of spora. <laughs> I told you. These little canidia are specially designed to quickly infect other cicadas. Now you might think that having a half-body riddled with fungus would be a bit of a red flag in the dating world, but the fungus has some tricks. Some species of Massaspora pump the cicada full of psilocybin, which is the hallucinogenic compound in magic mushrooms, and it also creates cathinone, which is a stimulant. So the infected cicadas are the life of the party. <laughs> Todd, what happened to your ass? Who cares? Woo! <laughs> the Who cares? also does something else that's quite sneaky. It somehow manipulates infected male cicadas into changing their mating call, which normally sounds like this to sound like a female cicada, which sounds like this. I mean, the bottom line is that the fungus is able to trick a lot of cicadas into dry humping the canidia. And these little canidia start to infect their hosts' butt, sorry, their hosts, but in a different way. The fungus of these canidia-infected cicadas will also devour the abdomen and genitals of their hosts. But instead of creating more canidia and trying to infect even more adults, they fill up what used to be the abdomen with these thick-shelled spores. These infected cicadas act basically normal. However, in going about their business, they rain these thick-shelled spores down onto the ground below, where they will wait for another 13 to 17 years to infect the next cycle. Good yeah. God, dude. So that's how they do it. <laughs> it's so fucked up. I mean, it's hard to root for the fungus on this one. Really? Athlete's foot is a fungus, do you know that? Eats keratin, which is in our skin and nails. Stop it! And that's the Stop starting it. party. I'm not it's listening just a to any of time. people. I tell you what, I'm gonna stuff. cinch my nope. pants real tight. Nope. <laughs> Can't make my nope. ass fall off. I mean, the movies get nope. it all wrong. Zombies are just gonna be people all hopped up on mushrooms and cocaine trying to get you to hump a powder ball that ate their junk. What no, about no, that? <laughs> like that? They got little sprinkles falling what out the gaps back in their to? short pants. You're missing a lot. Now, one day you see them shimmy up a flagpole and attach by deep throating that knob on top. Dave, what you doing up there? And it withers away. You know, make that into a movie. Call it the last ass of us. Oh, you missed some golden nuggets there at the I'm end. Good. Uh, no. Well. No, 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 no fungus, no fungi. No fungus no, among us? No, no parasites, no, no, none of that. I don't but like it. But what if they combine forces to be a fungus parasite? Isn't fungus like a parasite because no. it? I don't know. I don't want to know. I don't Parasitic like it. fungus? I don't want to learn anything else about it. Boy, oh, boy, boy. Oh boy. I remember there was one year, I, it was probably like 2004, I want to say. Maybe maybe even earlier. And we went camping and it was the Not year. Not we. No, 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 no. My family, my, my dad. And, mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and it was the year that the locusts came up out of the ground. The cicadas, yeah. Cicadas. Well, I call them locusts. Mm -hmm. And... They were everywhere. They were on yeah. every fucking tree. Yes. You could not sleep because it was just so loud. They are loud as fuck. So, yeah. But like did I've you never... ever go, I'm going to unleash something to eat your ass? Nope. No. Never a thought. Nope. Never. Yeah. Nope. Jesus Christ, dude. I really think Wow, that... almost 20 years ago. Oh, my God. Yeah, and I wasn't like a small child either. I was like... 12? 10 or something. 10, 12, yeah. Anyway, God, I knew a lot of this already. Yeah. And it's just like, thanks yeah. for reinforcing yeah. and giving my brain more knowledge of this. I just don't like, mm -mm. I don't like it. I don't, no. I don't like it. It really, um, it's really horrific. And I think that it makes for an interesting concept. And I know that um, The Last of Us 
is as successful as it is due to the probability. This is not like, why did the zombies exist? I don't know. Zombies. Like a lot of zombie films are just like, a curse. Or something. It's like, no. Nah, like, the yeah. fungus one kind of... They're infected people, Chad. Yeah. Listen, if I've learned anything from watching The Last of Us, you don't call them zombies. Because you will have people in the comments, actually, well, they're actually, not zombies. Yeah, like, yeah, and yeah. then give you like three paragraphs of why they're not zombies, but they're actually infected. Right. Like, infected people. Because I think that they might have the possibility of going back. Uh, I don't I don't have any like clues. Well, I check just this out. I think that might be a thing. Somebody in Do the chat just said that, that you know, a lot me. of times it's it's a virus that a causes virus, zombies. A virus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the reason for that is because of the terrifying nature of rabies and the way that it makes people act super aggressive mm -hmm. and you know i mean you become hydrophobic sure a bunch of where you know things. i've seen videos of people with late stage rabies that where they try to get them to drink water and you, they just can't like they fight so drinking thirsty. water they actively fought it yeah but they're burning up with fever and it's I knew really a boy shitty who it's really was shitty. playing baseball mm -hmm. and a bat, not a baseball bat, but uh -huh. a literal flying animal bat somehow came down and bit him. Uh -huh. And he had to go get a rabies shot. I got bit by a cat and had to get a rabies shot. Really? Hell yeah. Hell I've yeah, I did. I never had a rabies shot. Yeah, well, it's different. This was like 1996. Yeah. So it's different now than it was then. Oh, is then. that the story that your dad told? That oh, he, yeah. He's like, Chad, don't touch that cat. And you're like, but it loves me. And yeah. then he's like, it's going to yeah. get you. It bit the shit out and of me. And it did. Yeah, but yeah. like the, um, the whole thing with mold, fungus, things that are just like microscopic and dangerous. Ugh. Don't even get me started on the brain-eating amoeba. Mm -hmm. I, I won't get into freshwater when it's warm because... I have because to, like, convince him that he's not going to die if not he goes doing to it. swim in a now, lake with me. Now the cases of that are on the upswing. So this summer even you're more. not going to... Hell no. No, you told me that you would go tubing with me. That's fine. I am not submerging my body in fresh water like that. Hell, I'll purpose. get here and I'll wear nose plugs. But I'm not fucking letting that shit get up in my sinuses, period. All right. Well, that's been uh, an interesting period. video that I hope to never watch again. Thank, Thank you, guys. Frank. Thank you, Zafrank. Put out this wonderful video here recently. And it, actually today, I believe. Oh, really? Um, yeah. So wow. this one is uh, definitely a nightmare fuel fever yes. dream of yes. facts about nature well, around okay. us. So the sad fact is, Chad fears the spore you know... Better. Yeah, the spore boner, not my friend. Um, the sad reality of this is, though, those poor ants, those poor bugs. Yeah. Nature is a yeah. really scary situation. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this reaction. If you did, you could give us a like, you could subscribe to the channel, and you could even give us recommendations for things you want to see us react you to. You can. Not, not like this. Don't, not like this. Don't, <laughs> don't send anything like this. Um, you uh, can do that in the comments below on our Discord, our Patreon, or our Twitch. We go live on our Twitch every Friday at 2.30 p.m. We Eastern do. Standard Time. And uh, thanks for hanging around. Yeah. Appreciate you guys, and we will see you see in the next guys. video.